Okay, guys, we are yet back once again. Um, we had a bit of complication trying to get everything um, up and running, but yeah. that was the mixer's fault and partly my fault. But, like always, we always tend to um, fix things. things out. And, You're a little uh, loud, by the way, on my end. That's strange because I'm not loud on my end. Um, very interesting. Hold but on. anyway, um, might want to check your mixer headphone volume. That's something that well, people I'm not even using that. I'm not even using that. Um, so I can turn that all the way down. Um, hold on. I'm gonna. I was gonna say you might want to check the. I'll just check my mix volume to see. Um, I, I'm see, definitely not loud now. Yeah, I don't know. You were a little on the loud side on my end, so it might have been my mix volume decently high. Probably, although you were high on my end as well, so... Um, okay, like am I loud right... Oh, yeah, I am. Yeah, you are loud. So turn it down! Turn it down, turn it down. <laughs> Sorry, guys, we're still trying to figure stuff out here. And by the way, we're not going to edit this out. We are not going to edit no. this out. We are leaving it in here. This is this is going to be more on the behind the scenes side of things. Ugh. Okay, I should be good. Whatever. I can't figure it out right now. I'm, yep. Well, he's also, lazy. That's why. Handheld. And I'm using my mic handheld. I'm not. I, it's not in the stand. Well, I can tell you why you're loud because you're using your mic handheld. But anyway. Um, well, it was in the stand, but. Yeah, well, because Scapo took it out of his stand, that's what he did. Um, we are going to talk about an intro to the Apple Watch. Yes. And we are. It's going to be very interesting. I've owned my Apple Watch for almost a month. Not yep. quite. Um, I have had. A different Apple Watch um, for a little bit. I've had the Apple Watch Series 1, but I got my upgrade the same day that uh, Creighton got his um, watch. Um, I got the Series 3. He has a Series 4. Um, there's not too many differences. Um, Speaking of the Apple Watch, mine just went off because I got a text and I sure unrooted, did. so you guys wouldn't, so I can listen to the audio message while Creighton talks. Well, um, there's really not much to speak of in an intro, um, but I will talk to you about a couple things. First of all, it doesn't matter what when you get, whether it's the forty. Or the 42 if you're getting the Series 4. Although Apple still has a Series 3. Um, so the, in that case you would get the 38 or the 42. It doesn't matter which one you get. Um, Gabriel's is a 42. Two. And mine is in the a Apple Watch, 40. Yeah, in the Apple Watch's case it's 40 and 44 millimeters. Yeah, I in believe. the Apple Watch 4 case it is. And... Yeah, and in, also, um, it doesn't matter whether you get it through cellular or not. Both of ours are not mm. cellular. I wish I got into cellular, but I don't really need it, and probably it's probably going to have an unlock fee. So, no thanks. Um, not necessarily. Or a um, connection. The fee. The only thing that you would have to pay for is the connection fee. Which so, I don't think my parents would want to do anyway. So, I mean, honestly, I always have my phone on me anyway. It, it'll it'll be fine if I uh, sacrifice the cellular capabilities. Um, oh, pff, beautiful. <laughs> anyway, I have it slowed down because I'll just give in, we'll give intros to the gestures. Um. It's mainly, mostly the same as iOS, but there are some certain differences that are pretty easy to get, get, you know, switch between between the iPhone and the um, Apple Watch. It just takes some. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, to. so we'll kind of go over that. Um, but anyway, um, so 
in terms of what does the watch look like, um, how would you wear it? Well, it doesn't matter whether <laughs> you whether you wear the. Well, you're panned anyway. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no. That's <laughs> All right, sounds good. That, um, okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and by the way, we're keeping all this stuff in here. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> uh, and uh, you have no you have no control on what goes on in these videos, you idiots. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. So, anyway. Uh, back to square one. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so it doesn't matter whether you have it on your right or left wrist or whether you have the digital crown facing to the right or to the left, but one thing that you must make note of is don't do what I did and have the screen facing the underside of your arm because it doesn't, but for people, it doesn't, but for people who do, (laughs) yeah, I tried it and it does not feel good, but for people who do wear, you know, talking watches or braille watches or, you know, the sighted community that watch this channel, um, who wear normal watches, you should know well enough to face the screen upwards. Yes, I knew that when I got mine from when I had a talking watch. Um, it's not pretty wearing. Well, the see, I had not thing upside worn down. a talking watch in a long time, so so you, know, you wouldn't remember I, how to put it on. I didn't remember <laughs> how to put the stupid thing on. But <laughs> anyway, um, besides and this is, all you that, know, a friend of mine told me, "No, dude, put the screen up," and so I did, and it feels a lot better. <laughs> And um, the um, scanning stuff may be a little more accurate with the heart yes, rate and stuff like and that. and I've actually done uh, quite a bit of extraneous movement stuff, and, a, I, and it's calculated my heart rate a lot better. Um, mm-hmm. I will tell you that I have mine on my right arm with the digital crown facing the right-hand side, so facing the uh, facing your shoulder, basically. Mine's a little... Uh, mine's a little different. I have mine configured on my left arm because that's a little more comfortable for me. So I can use, you know, my right hand. I'm a righty, so I use my right hand to use the screen. Um, and I have the digital crown facing the top, like if you facing right also, but not facing your shoulder, facing the like the ba- uh, back of your hand. Um, and that's how I have mine facing. Um, that's what's most, what is most comfortable for me, but you can do, you know, whatever, um, is most comfortable, comfortable for you. Yes. And in the watch setup, um, it'll ask you, um, which wrist you want to wear it on. Okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, that's pretty much it, um. But however you have it worn, right next to the digital crown will always be your side button. Um, now, just as a side note, um, that does not put your screen to sleep like on the iPhone. No. I'll show you what it does. So if I hit the side button now, the watch is asleep right now. So I'll hit it. It wakes it up, and if I hit it again, you would think, oh, it puts it to sleep. No, it does this. Dock. Messages. I didn't hit it hard enough. It takes you to your dock, which shows the recent apps. And by the way, yep. the dock is not an app switcher. It just shows the recent apps that you have had opened. And I'll, cause of course, I'll put my hand, palm over the... Um, screen to display put it to sleep. and that's how you put it to sleep um, um, and the side button also doubles as your power button slash if you have it enabled emergency SOS and how that works um, in contrast to the iPhone because the iPhone you have to press the button five times and if it's in your pocket sometimes and you have a lot of crap in your pocket you can accidentally um, pocket emergency SOS uh, 
and it's not pretty. So with the Apple Watch, you have to hold it down, and you have to keep holding it until the siren noises stop. And um, to cancel that, while the siren's still going off, you just let go. And uh, with the iPhone, you have to hit cancel. But um, I have mine disabled. I did have it enabled for a time, but I disabled it because um, I don't want to accidentally call the police. No. Um, and it will ask you about that in the setup. I want yep. to make one quick note, uh, a couple quick notes about setup. Um, when you turn on your Apple Watch for the first time, whatever one you get, and when pressing you pressing the side button, uh, you well, they should know that by now. But when you turn yeah. on your Apple Watch for the first time, um, you triple click the digital crown three times. That enables voiceover for you. And then you'll be on a screen to where you have to hit the... Where it has all the different languages panning around the screen. And then you have to hit the info button on your screen. You swipe to it and you double tap. And that is how you can choose your language. You can choose your um, your region, uh, your country, and you know things of that nature. And then... Um, the other part that I want to make note of is you either have two choices on how to pair it to your phone. Uh, because the watch does require uh, your phone to work properly. Um, you don't need it, but it does require it to work properly. For setup. For setup. It requires it for setup. Afterwards, you could use Wi-Fi for certain things, but not for everything. Um... And we'll go into more of that in these Apple Watch tutorials. Who knows? We might make some today, so keep your eye out on the channel! No, no, no! Anyway. Alright, then. Um, I did it because I can. <laughs> anyway. Haters, fuck off. Yeah, go away. We don't want to hear from you. It's our channel. We can nope. do whatever we want. And yep. by the way, people love our funness. I know that's incorrect grammar, but they love our funness over there at the uh, Blind uh, uh, Teaching Center in Massachusetts. So, hey, pretty cool. There you go. Um, <laughs> so, haters, yeah, what do you have grammar. to say? Great grammar, buddy. Great grammar. Although yeah. I've done worse. Um, <laughs> so anyway, you have two options to pair it to your phone. You can do a camera, which, um, which... that's kind of tricky. You can yeah. do it. See, I can do. I can scan QR codes on a screen if it was a big enough screen, but the watch, I can't line that up. <laughs> um, you have to do it just right. Um, it's kind of... Okay, from what I can tell, the, the code is kind of right there in the corner, almost. Um, so it's really hard to I reach. What I do is hit the pair manual button. Yep. and On both. On both. On both the iPhone and, and the watch. The watch. Um, so I hit that, um, and then I hit this desk. Anyway. <laughs> Not really. Uh, no, folks... I want to under. I want to explain something. I don't go around hitting desks. Here, let me hit your desk. Let me hit your desk. <laughs> let me hit your desk. Um. So after you hit the more info button on the watch and stuff like that, you have to hit pair manually on your iPhone, phone, and, and on the watch, and then. The watch will show you a name that you have to click on on the... Or your watch will show you a name, its name, that you have to click on on the iPhone. After that, wait a second or two, and a code will pop up. You'll just have to type that on the iPhone. Yeah. After that, you will continue set up on the iPhone itself, not on the watch. Yes. Um, um, and if I, f if I feel like being considerate to you guys, I will unpair my watch since it does back up automatically, and I will go through setup for you guys. Yes. Because it it backs up when it you unpair anyway, to the so app. I will be willing to unpair my watch just to show you guys how SAP um, works. So once you're set up, 
Um, your watch will do some tapping on your wrist to let you know that it is set up. Um, and it tells you to press the digital crown, I believe, when setup is complete to get to the watch face I because mean, it, it has to sync everything. It gets to the watch All. face. Well, no. Yep. Um, what it does is in the setup, it'll it'll sync everything, and then after it, the sync is complete, it will you press you the press the digital video. crown, and then it takes you to your watch face. Yep. Um, I could, uh, we could, you know, possibly show a couple things um, that we, I could demonstrate a couple things, Gabriel, that me and you, you can, changed. and then, you can, and then if uh, we want to after this, we can get this edited and up uploaded, and then I'll unpair my watch and do the demo on how to set up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Um, you're going to hear some different things on my Apple Watch because I have it customized the way that I like. I do too. Um, um, and we can compare what apps and what watch face we use in another video. Yes, because Gabriel and I, while we use the same face, we have it looking differently. Yeah. Um, yep. Although we will say, guys, that um, we, while the weather app that comes with the watch by default is really nice. We recommend strongly Weather Gods. Yep, because you, it has... You have got to get your hands on Weather Gods for iOS and for the watch. Great because... voiceover support. Mm-hmm. And the issue with the normal weather app, because I know we'll have some arguments, you know, why the fuck would we, you know, if they did take a look on the App Store, why the fuck would we pay it for an app like that? Um, there's a problem with the weather app on the watch, uh, when you have it in the, uh, modular large, uh, configuration, which is in the middle of the watch face, um, where sometimes upon reboot, it will not show your location. It would be like weather, blah, 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 blah. And I like it showing my location. So now this is one similar thing, I think, and plus the battery icon, his might be in this, uh, different place than mine but um here's what the weather gods icon I can will say you on your watch uh, yeah face. i'll show you that here 3 .20, 3 .20, and i got mine okay i'll show mine here in just a minute eight degrees feels like six degrees mostly sunny wind from the southeast 14 kilometers per hour gentle breeze snow unlikely sunset 7 57 p.m calgary now that that's is, how mine is set up that is um gabriel's and his is set up in celsius i'll show you fahrenheit and I've slowed mine down. Let me turn mine up just slightly. 65, 70%, 60, 55, 65%. 60%. There we go. I'll put it to 60. I always keep mine on 50, but let's go ahead and look at this. Monday, March 20, 1727, 41 degrees, mostly cloudy, wind from the north. north. Really? The reverb of the week, Mac Ball. The reverb of the week won't be here for long. Order now. Ah. Oh. Well, of course, that would pop up. 41 degrees, mostly cloudy, wind from the north-northeast, 14 miles per hour, moderate breeze, gusts 19 miles per hour, sunset, 1950, Washington Courthouse. So there you guys go. Um, I will show you the settings that I change on the watch, and then I will show you the settings that I change in the watch app. Okay? So... I'm going to go ahead show you mine and just go to later. the, um, I'm on my watch face and I'll just hit the digital crown to go to the home screen. Mail. And I'm on the home screen. Now, one of the now, first... are you list view or grid view? That's what I was heading to, but thank you for interrupting me. Um, so what I'm going to do is Mr. what I have mine set to, um, um, if, uh, okay, I have mine set to, let me dismiss that, um, here, let me, uh, go up here and turn on do not disturb. Wait, I forgot I can't do it from here. You can't do that on the... There we go. So now we're going to go back to the home screen. So, um, I have mine in list view because it shows it in ABC order. There you go. Um, and if, now by default, yours is set to grid view, which I'll 
show you how to uh, change that. Um, if I would stop putting it to sleep, that would be nice. And we have a braille note going off. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, so I'm in grid view. If I just swipe... See, it puts it in a weird looking view. Um, it's very strange. So it, all I have to do is 3D touch, which is press down. Um, and if it decides to work... Oh, I wouldn't hit it hard enough. That's why. So I'll hit list view. And, and I have go. it set up the same way. So I'm going to just swipe up with two fingers. Which is how you scroll. And that's how you scroll. <laughs> and go down to settings and double tap. And there we go. So time. Um, there's nothing I change in there. Um, however, you can change your watch time to 24 hour within the app just by going to the clock settings. Whoops, I waited for too long. So I'll just tap the screen to wake it up. Um, airplane mode, I don't change anything in there. Wi-Fi, I don't mess with. Bluetooth, um, that is how you pair a Bluetooth device to listen to music. Um, do not disturb, there's things you can change in here, but I don't. General, um, we'll kind of go back to that. I do go in here. I do go in there. Uh, passcode. Um, I do go in there, but it's on the iPhone. Yeah, and how I have mine configured uh, with the um, passcode stuff is I have a four-digit passcode set up, and I have it re detect my wrist. So if I pull the watch off, it will automatically lock. And to unlock, um, I either type in my password or I reach for my phone and use Touch ID on my iPhone to unlock, which is the method I kind of prefer. Yes, um, and we both have that set up the same way. Um, I also have a four-digit passcode on mine, and I also have a. Uh, uh, I have a, also unlock. have it to, uh, for iPhone unlock. Which, by the way, when you enable on the watch app on your phone, um, it will ask you on the watch to enter in the passcode. So be aware of that. So I'm going to tap the screen. We're going to go to general first. Um, orientation, I don't think I change anything in here. Let me go in here and look. Okay, no, I don't, because I set that up and set up. Wake screen. Wake screen, yes. Let's go in here. That's something I did change in there. Okay, now by default, this setting, that's turned on. I always turn that off. And I'll kind of show yep. you. I'll show you what it does. I'll turn it on. Wake screen on wrist raise. Switch button on. And I'll lock it. And I'll raise my wrist. And of course. And it won't talk. It won't because talk voiceover. because vo I have voiceover set. But see, it's. I raised my wrist, and it took me to the watch face. So I don't like that personally. I have mine disabled as so well. So I keep mine disabled. On crown up, um, I keep that disabled. I think it's on by default. Um, what is that? It's for the crown, I think. If you like touch it, I think it wakes up the screen. Okay, auto launch audio apps. That is for if you play something on the iPhone, it'll launch it on the watch. I don't like that. And I do have I do have that enabled. So when I'm controlling my music from my watch, I can just use the um, digital crown to turn up and down the volume and stuff like that in the auto play. By the way, the, how do you uh, how do you uh, talk about how you adjust the volume? Which which we'll talk about that in a tutorial. But just because, how do you adjust the volume on the Apple Watch with the digital crown? Um. I don't think you can unless you're in walkie talk you're a call. Okay, I kind of figured. But I yeah. just wanted to But I you. use it. I you actually you know what you can use it for those if you're on a slider I think you can use it. 
Okay, this part right here on tap, which means tap to wake default. your screen, I leave it at default. Okay. Now, one thing you can do on the watch is you can do a two finger scrub in a lot of cases. Nightstand mode, this is something me and Gabriel change immediately. I had mine enabled for a little bit with my old watch, but especially with these new watch that are kind of, you know, you can bump it to put it to sleep or, or like s snooze the alarm or shut the alarm off. But every time you just slightly walk by the watch or you hit the desk that's on it, it, it will, will turn off. on. And um, we didn't so that's like why that. I disabled it. Um, on my old watch, it wouldn't do that. Okay, so we'll go back. Uh, nothing in there. Um, during setup, it'll ask you to enable location services. So just enable it, guys. Accessibility. Um, accessibility, there's nothing I change in there um, except on the watch app itself. Website data. Website data, I don't mess with that. Siri. Siri. Now, there are things I mess with in here, so we'll go in here. Siri. Hey Siri. Switch button. Off. I keep that off. I don't like to go, hey Siri. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. All the time. No. I want to control when I want Siri. Just say hey Siri after waking Apple Watch. Um, but it is cool. Race to speak. Switch button. Off. I turn that off. Just bring Apple Watch close to your mouth to talk to Siri. Voice feedback. Heading. Selected. Always on. Okay, I always keep that on. Control with silent mode. And if you have a watch older than the Series 3, you will not have the voice feedback options. VoiceOver no. will speak your Select. Siri for Select. you, and that's Control. why I upgraded. And my mine's Control a little bit faster mode. than Okay, I one. always leave voice feedback. Selected. Always on. Always on. Control with silent mode. Control with silent mode or headphones only. Headphones only. Okay, voice volume. Volume, fifty percent adjustable. I keep mine. I turn mine down to fifty. Um, because by default, it's at a hundred. Forty-four percent. Oh, that's why. Control how loud Siri speaks. Responses. Siri voice. Heading. Siri will speak with the same voice selected on your phone. Okay, whatever voice you have on your phone, the watch will use. Siri. Siri. Work up. Regulatory. Reset. Reset. And that's it for settings on the watch. Now, we're going to take a look at, um, we're going to take a look at the watch settings on the watch app. Okay. So, um, here we are. And, um, of course, I want to mention something here. You must have Bluetooth on for the watch to work. And if you think that that's an Apple thing, no. Mm -mm. All smart watches are like this. So, of course, as you can tell, there's a lot more settings in here. So, we're going to go to uh, brightness and text size. Uh, that's something I forgot to look at on the watch, but I'll do it in here too. I have mine at zero. I keep that at default because that's fine. Okay, so we'll just get out of here. Um, let's go to sounds and haptics. We're going to skip over general for a while because there's a whole bunch in there. There's a lot in there. Once you get to the iPhone app, there are a lot more settings in that general section. Okay, I don't know why that's down, but whatever. It um it adjusts along with your um voiceover, voiceover volume. volume, like when, you know when you can. I forgot. Yeah, you about know when that. you control it with the two finger gesture. Or right. Whatever, okay. That adjusts it unless you adjust the volume separately in voiceover settings and like to keep it where it is, then the alert volume would be higher. Mm-hmm. Silent mode, off 50, 50, 100, silent 50, 60%, 1 alert volume, heading, 100%, 90, 70, 60, 50%, 40, 50%. 
Okay, we'll keep it at 50. That's fine. Silent mode off. Silent mode. Silent mode will not need alarms and timers while Apple Watch is charging. Uh, I think by default that's on. No, it isn't. Oh, wait, that's right. Silent mode will not need alarms and timers while Apple Watch is charging. So, Containers. just, Speaking so. Words. Silent mode will not mute alarm and timers while Apple. Uh, okay, so silent mode doesn't mute. The alarms while Apple Watch is charging, but I think it mutes stuff when you're wearing the watch, I think, as far as I remember. I don't mess with silent mode, so, um, but you can mess with it at your own time. Haptics, I always keep that on. I like prominent. I have mine set the same, yep. Um, because you get a little vibration before it goes off. Crown haptics, that's when you're oh, scrolling right. with the crown. That is something that I don't have with my watch, um, being a Series 3. Yeah, the, seri the Series 4 introduced that, where the crown actually will do... It'll tap. Cover to mute, I don't like that, um, so I turn it off. I have mine enabled in case my phone's muted and I don't have my watch muted and I'm at school and I get a call. I can just slam my palm on the uh, display to shut it off. Okay, that's for the Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse complication, which we will go over at a later date. My watch. Okay. Passcode. Okay, passcode. I'll show you what me and Gabriel change in here. Okay, if it wasn't on, you would use a longer passcode. Okay, um, unlock with iPhone, of course we have that enabled. Okay, I have that turned off for now. Um, but that is a cool feature that it will erase your Apple Watch if it ever got stolen. Wrist detection. Um, I believe that is on by default. Yes, it is. Yep. Because and I've set mine up several times, and I remember, mm -hmm. I think I remember it being on. No, yeah, they're on by default. And, uh, when wrist detection is on, like I said, it will automatically lock your watch when you pull the watch off. Also, if you want to use unlock with iPhone... You have to have wrist detection turned on. So let's say you didn't like wrist detection. You don't want it to lock automatically when you pull your watch off of your wrist. You can disable that. And if you want to lock it yourself, um, it's in the control center. There's like a little toggle that you can use to mm -hmm. lock the watch, which I don't really like. It's easier to just pull the watch off and have it lock and, you know, pull it off and forget it. You, you know, if it gets stolen, it's already locked anyway. Yeah, they can't do anything uh, necessarily. They can enter in as many passcode attempts as they want, but um, um, let's see what Apple uh, describes as the wrist detection. If you are using the passcode, wrist detection locks your watch when you are not wearing it, so your information stays secure. Told keep you. that on, guys. Um, really, keep it on because it really helps. It really, yep. it really helps. Um, so we'll go back out of here. Um, we'll go in here. Okay, that's on by default. Um, you can turn that off. But um, as Gabriel said, he has his off. Mine's on because I normally don't hold the side. I don't hold the side button in that long. Yeah, and besides, even if you did, just release it and it'll stop it'll the stop. countdown. I've done that before. 
Yeah, fall I detection. used to do that just for the hell of it. This is this that is only pretty a cool. Series four thing, or is it a series three? No, I think the three has it. I think Here, the three let me has check. it. Let me check. Because by default, it's on. But I'm going to turn that off. But if you were an older person, or if you had a person that had trouble uh, walking, fall detection might not be a bad thing. Um, it, it really might not be. Nope, I don't have fall detection. Okay, so that's a Series 4 thing. That's really interesting. So, demo. Um... <laughs> well, I really don't want to because if I do, then it will call emergency services. No, I don't mean you. I don't mean you. I'm going to do a little bit of a demo here. We're going to hold the side button down. I'm not going to hold it for too long or it will go through. We're going to hold it long enough so you guys can see what it does and we'll release the button. It's holding it. Cancel. And that is calling emergency SOS, uh, emergency services. Had you hold, had I held it down longer, it would have gone through, and I would have had a fun time. Not. Yeah, but that would do it. I think about four or five times, and then it'll no, it'll do it two and two and a two of the full cycle sirens. Like here, I'll I'll let at least one of them go off. Cancel. So that's the full siren. It'll do two of those full and then one little burst of the next one and then it'll call. I think it's like five seconds or so. And then it'll call. But um, let's go back to general. <laughs> this is where the good stuff is. How's the file duration going? How is the what? Um, the I'm file using, duration. I'm using Simple Recorder, so I don't know. I should have used Amadeus. <laughs> you should be fine. Yeah, we should be okay. Um, anyway, let's click through. Um, I would keep that on. Yep, I keep that on. Okay. Um, let's go in here. Okay, let's go to voiceover. There's a lot of accessibility features built right into the watch, which guys, th this this is th this really is incredible. Don't take the accessibility on the Apple Watch for granted. Um, and in fact, we have a lot more tutorials planned. Yep. Okay, speaking rate, I'm going to turn that back up to 80. I have um, mine 10% uh, down. I have mine at 70, but same thing. Voiceover volume, heading. Voiceover volume, 50%. Adjustable. Of course, you can adjust all that. Tactic time, on. Tactic time. Well, I could demo that real quick. That won't take long. If I double tap the screen right now... Oh, yours sounds a little bit different than mine. Here's... Here, I'll do mine right now. Um, so I'll turn up my mic here. So there's mine. And there's different options you can use um uh, and it'll tap it in those options so i'll have Crinton go over those i think yeah i'll go over those right now as a matter of fact so let's hit it I don't know what Terse does. Uh, 
Oh, yes, and you can preview this on your iPhone. Yes. With Morse code. Select when you double tap the screen. Oh, no. Watch will tap each digit of the time in Morse code. Preview button. Preview. When you selected, terse, select terse. Select Morse when you double tap the screen. Apple Watch will long tap for every five hours, then short tap for the remaining hours. Then it will long tap for each quarter hour. Preview button. Preview. I keep mine at You're, default. Um, yeah, I keep mine at digits. With Morse selected, digits. Select double tap to feel hours and minutes. Triple tap to feel minutes only. But if I wanted to feel just the minutes, I'll triple tap. I'll do the same. Wait, hang on. I don't think mine worked right. Hang on. 1750. Mine didn't either. Okay, that time it worked. This is mine. It, mine showed 50 minutes. Yeah. So, um... Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, but I I, I do love ha um, Haptic Time. They introduced that in Watch OS 2. And, yep, uh, I used it with my watch, and I love it. it it's, it's incredible how it works. So let's back out of here. I turn that off. It is a neat thing to have, yeah, I, especially since you're, once you're do. learning watch, but I turn mine off. I generally do. As well. Speak on wrist raise. Well, mm -mm. I turn that off. Um, I think by default it's on. Um, but I don't mess with that. Screen curtain. On. Screen curtain. The watch has a screen curtain, as does all the Apple stuff. I have that disabled currently. I have that enabled. Screen curtain turns the screen off. There will be nothing visible on the display, and you will only be able to use the device by listening to voiceover. Speak seconds. Button. Speak seconds. Let's go in here. Selected. Speak seconds. Button. Voice over. Back. Speak seconds. Head. Always. Always. Selected. Speak seconds if displayed. <coughs> Speak seconds if displayed. If your watch face has it, which we'll go over to in another tutorial. Never. Never. Default behavior is to speak seconds. If seconds and I have mine set Select. to always Never. speak Select. seconds, Select. no matter what. Okay, well, if I hit always and then tap the screen, it tells me how many seconds are in the minute. But I always keep mine at default. So let's back out of accessibility. Um... Handoff is great. I've actually used it a couple times. Uh, wake screen, that's kind of the same that's thing the on the same, watch. It's that's the, the same, same setting. Same setting. Okay, let me explain this. You can take screenshots of your Apple Watch. You press the digital crown and the side button at the same time. Workout power saving mode. Very cool. Usage. And then reset, which we won't go into. My watch heading. And honestly, you won't even need to go there because you don't um, you don't need to do the erase all content and settings because once you unpair it, it'll back up and back, um, reset to factory. Mm-hmm. So I have most of these same settings here, mostly. There's some um, that he has different, but, you know, like we've said, they're mostly the same. Um, so, that's it.
that's mainly our intro. Um, we kind of went through a little bit of the settings that we have gone through or that we both use. But I think it would be fair to say, Gabriel, 